What's up, guys? It is the giant Sean Hood from FM 99, and I am joined by Joe Principe from Rise Against. What's up, Joe? How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting I love, pumped. <laughs> I love that smile I'm seeing on your face right now. Like I can, You're beaming with energy at the moment. <laughs> well, that, that's good to hear. I, I had my coffee. Um, <laughs> I'm 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 like so pumped we're able to uh to tour, you know, in August. Um I, it's just exciting. It's exciting to release a new record, you know. Like I, I'm I'm pumped for sure. Yeah, the world has been a crazy place for the last year without a doubt. Um we've we we haven't seen anybody. We darn sure haven't seen you guys. Um, yeah. everybody's been trying to stay safe and what have you how have you guys been during all this? Have you managed to stay safe and and kind of keep yourself quarantined? I guess you've been in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it was, it was nice to be with my, my family and my children, you know, to help them through e-learning and, and all that stuff. Um, you know, and, and to try to make them feel as normal as possible without, you know, with them not being able to really hang out with their friends, like they would want to. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was a challenge like everyone was facing though, you know, but it, it was nice to be home and, and fully submerge myself in, into their their daily routine and, and their school you know so it, yeah it was it was good but after a while like you know I've, I've been touring for 25 years or 30 years with my old bands and, and rise against so it was it was this is the longest i've ever been home like since probably high school <laughs> <laughs> well yeah but i mean like you said a little bit of that extra time especially in the time we're in right now as you have kids it's nice to be there to be able to lend that helping hand so you spent a lot of the quarantine parenting it seems like Absolutely. You know, um, you know, and, and it, you know, it's, I, I definitely have a new respect for teachers and how mm -hmm. hard their jobs are. Um, oh my God. Um, <laughs> you know, and my youngest is seven. So getting him to sit for longer than five minutes is like, you know, it's impossible, you know? So it, it was, it was a chore. Um, but we got through it. They're up, they're back in school, you know, I'll be back, um, getting to, to what I do, you know, for my job and, um yeah it's definitely uh here's to like a, a brighter future hopefully <laughs> I, hear, I hear what you're saying about that though i mean i'm 36 and it's hard to get me to sit still for five minutes i had to take two benadryl to sit down today uh <laughs> just to chill out um you know a lot of us dove into hobbies and stuff and everything while we were stuck in quarantine did you get did you get into anything uh learn did you learn to make bread or anything while you're stuck there no no bread um fully fully submerged in the home barista thing like i definitely oh. make yeah, I'm like a I'm a coffee dork. I, although my drink of choice is iced latte, and that's pretty easy to make. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely learned the ins and outs of you know brew, brewing temperatures and timing of pulling espresso shots and nerd stuff like that. And then I I started cycling a lot. You know that was a nice way to, to I got on my bike and I would go for two or three hours and and that was nice to clear my head mm -hmm. and to listen to podcasts or music or or whatever um you know it, it just it was definitely it broke up the monotony of uh you know the quarantine life so so i did a lot of that yeah i think that's important to find those things to kind of distract yourself and and like you said kind of clear your head center yourself a little bit um you did talk about listening to music so let's talk about it real quick ninth studio album nowhere generation it's coming out on june 4th which is like a week and a half or something from now yeah. uh i'm excited about it man we've been playing the nowhere generation the self-titled song i love that song man like first of all nowhere generation talk to me a little bit about the the title and the idea behind that and was it just i mean was it just obvious that was going to be the first song you guys released um you know i i think so it was it was a toss-up between that and one one other song that's that's not you know it'll be out on the record um it's always it's always like we always kind of leave it up to the the label and uh you know the the people in the radio world because we love all of our songs so right, it doesn't matter right. to us but um i do think the message behind our generation you know tim our singer kind of wrote that you know from a personal perspective it, as being a parent um and you know an adult in in 20 well we, he wrote that in 2019 mm -hmm. so um just recognizing the struggles, you know, that the youth kind of have going through their life and, and trying to make it and keeping their head above water, you know? Right. Um, it, it, it's tough. Cause I think when I was growing up, I was pretty, 
yeah, I hate to say it for lack of a better term. I was pretty self-centered. You know, I just worried about my, my, my world, my skateboarding world. I didn't look at the big picture. Right. I had no plan growing up. Like, uh, I, you know, as far as what I wanted to do for a career path, you know, I, I did start going to college to be an accountant and then I quit to pursue music. <laughs> uh, how, 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 how do you make the jump from accounting to uh, like punk hardcore? Like <laughs> that's they seem like on the absolute opposite ends of the spectrum. You know, I I really think it was me in my head. I was like, what can I do where I'll make a decent living and do you know do what comes natural to me and uh, you know numbers they come natural to me, you know, like just in general math. So I was like, Oh, maybe I'll try the accounting thing. Although as, as mundane as that is. Um, but uh, there was always that underlying, um, burst of, of musical creativity, just ready, you know, ready to, to come out. And I, you know, my mom was super cool to let me follow my path. And, uh, I just continued with music, you know, you know, cause like when you're in high school and college, you know, my old band, we kind of, we toured here and there and we were mm -hmm. pretty submerged in the, the whole like fat record, epitaph record world, you know? Um, but that, that was definitely not a career path. That was, you know, we weren't going to live off the, that band. Um, so I was kind of like, when that band broke up, it was like, do we I start a new band? But like, do I finish school or do I go full on with Rise Against? And, and we all took a leap of faith. <laughs> oh. I, sometimes that's exactly what you have to. You know what? I'd say it's worked out okay for you. Yeah, it's been it's that's... been it's been a nice little ride. Yeah. So yeah, I'm very grateful. Nine nine albums later, it's it, you're doing all right, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's I'm really excited about the album coming out on June fourth. Mark that down on your calendars, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, um, Tim did an interview where he was talking about the album, and he said that um, I think the idea was something along the lines of. You look at your everybody's raised to believe that their generation is going to like over overtake their parents' generation. Like they're going to do even better than the generation before them. And we're just everything's going to get better and better and better. And it's the American dream. And it's not always working out that way. And, you know, especially right now, there's, you know, like the last year has not been great. The economy has been down the pandemic. Obviously, uh, there's been a lot of social upheaval, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it almost feels like the album is almost perfectly placed as far as that time as far as the time frame for its release because i feel like a lot of people will be able to link to that feeling uh and really connect with the album is this does this almost kind of put it in a perfect place for like a because you guys i mean obviously with your punk backgrounds and everything does this kind of make like i'm trying to think how to phrase it like an opening for punk to have a resurgence because it almost feels like this uh, is the perfect atmosphere for that that whole punk vibe to come smashing back through yeah, I mean, that is, you know, by nature, the to me, the definition of punk, right? It's, it's punk started as a reaction to something, as a reaction to 70s rock and roll or, or heavy metal or, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and also it was, it was a platform. So, so, you know, the youth can have a voice and shout what, what they wanted to say, um, or, or just do it on their own terms. And I feel like Nowhere Generation is definitely a record for the youth. It's definitely a, a you're, you're definitely hitting the nail on the head. It's definitely um, is a throwback to our roots. You know, our, I mean, our roots are ingrained in us, right? We, we, first and foremost, like we are a punk band. We, we still listen to punk music, you know, aside from, from other, you know, other music. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, we, have, we have a, you know, you know, but but first and foremost, we're a punk band, and um, so that's just ingrained in us. When we're frustrated, it's going to come out in our music, where we're playing fast and angry, and and um, you know, with with melody there, so people can relate to it as well. Um, that's just how I was raised or brought up in the music scene. Um, but I do, I do think, um, yeah, this record is definitely for the youth, and and I, I would as I would imagine it's it would be relatable i mean it's relatable to me and, and but, but yeah it, it's it'll be interesting to see once it's out in the wild you know how how people respond but the songs that are out now so far we've gotten a really good response um 
you know, when you talk about it being out in the wild, the funny part about this is you're one of the first bands that I've I've done. I've interviewed I've done a lot of these stream yard interviews where we're talking over the internet and everything, which I love by the way, because I can see the face. We can actually make a connection here. Yeah. Um you're one of the first bands I'm talking to whose album will be coming out in a time frame that kind of works with you guys wanting to go on tour. Yeah. There, well, there were so I'm, many other people that may not have had that option because we didn't know when things were going to start getting better. Yeah. And we, we definitely put off the release of the record for that reason. We didn't, we didn't want to release it and just have it go stat or just, just dead, you know, mm-hmm. like um, we wanted to be able to play these songs live as soon as they came out, you know, like to get that excitement. Um, so we, we waited, I think we pushed it like four or five times throughout the last wow. know, year. Um, <laughs> so it's a lot of false starts, but, but I feel like we, we waited for the right time. And luckily, uh, you know, with, with, with science on our side, they, they were able to get the vaccines out in the world a lot quicker than anticipated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yep. I, I just got my second one, um, a few weeks back now. Yeah, so, same with me. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm all, I'm pumped about it, man. We were able to have a real birthday party for my girlfriend, see friends. It was really nice, you know. <laughs> That's great. It was really nice. Um, and I know you're waiting to get back out on the road. You can't wait for that. You'll be able to actually, like you said, once the album's out in the wild, now you'll be able to to see the reception to it live in person, which is yeah. going to be unique from the last year. Yeah, and also it's like now with our ninth record out it's it's harder and harder to pick songs to play live because we have mm-hmm. just a bigger catalog to pull from so you know I'm, we're waiting to see like what what our fans react to and what they want to hear live so you know you guys tell us like, on our social media like what songs you want to hear okay. I'm, telling, <laughs> I'm telling you right now that you're going to get a lot of nowhere generation for people i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. break that out right now <laughs> um uh, you know uh, you, as far as the punk background you were talking about like you said it's all ingrained in us and of course as an artist you listen to way more than that i mean it's, it's eclectic but yeah the punk background wh- can you name any punk influences who really kind of grabbed you and made you want to start making uh that kind of music oh yeah i mean definitely the bad brains mm-hmm. um and uh the bad brains a lot of dc hardcore like minor threat uh, yep, okay. Gazi, you know like that kind of thing um you know a, a band that was really huge in, in opening my eyes i guess to to uh the world when i was really young with the dead kennedys i mean joe yeah. biafra i mean he's saying about the reagan era and how everything was and i i didn't realize it at the time because i was in like sixth grade of course it, it slowly like set in the older i got like oh wait like people are pissed off and this is a this music is a way for them to like is a as a release it's, it's a mm. form of a you know their their expression um but they're singing about important things and that's that's something i noticed right away versus whatever you know like what i, was, I mean i love kiss and van halen i grew up on right, that of course before yeah. punk. But I realized there was something more to the Dead Kennedys and Bad Religion and things like that, bands like that, you know, with their lyrics. The, you know, what's funny is you bring up the Dead Kennedys and so many other punk bands. It's funny, dude, because I'm 36 years old, right? I was born in 1985, but I really didn't discover a lot of punk music. My parents were, my mother was a head, was a hair band, like kind of person. Uh, nice. So I heard a lot of Bon Jovi and whatnot. Uh, my dad was, you know, Metallica, Pantera, Slayer, guys like that. Um, but I didn't discover a lot of punk music until there was a movie that came out. And this seems like the, the worst way to discover punk music is via a movie, but <laughs> it was called, it was called SLC punk. And oh, I remember, yeah. I remember here, I remember hearing the songs for the first time and I immediately got the soundtrack and wanted to check it out because there were so many songs on there. One of them in particular was the dead Kennedys. So it's funny when you say that that's an important um, group for you, because that was kind of the first one, one of the first ones that I heard as well. Sorry, I'm yeah. a, a malfunction with my uh, with my curtain here. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't have it fall on you. That would be like that's like our drummer's worst nightmare if our backdrop falls on him when we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, no! no. Um, you bring up your drummer, um, and I actually had a question related to that. Your uh, drummer Brandon, and yep. um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Brandon and Dan. You've been with those guys for so long now. What? what's it been like being with somebody for so long on this project? Like it's, it's, I, I am at, I, in some bands you see a little bit of contempt breed where they, they have different visions for what it's going to be as time goes on. And with some other guys, man, it's like, it's like a family almost like uh, just recently I spoke with Dexter Holland and noodles. Those guys have been together forever of the offspring and yeah. they seem like brothers when they're talking. Yeah. I, I mean, 
we're definitely brothers. Um, we've, I mean, we've, we've spent myself, Tim and Brandon ha have spent so yeah, 20 years together longer than, than we spent with our wives basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, um, we, we love each other. We're, we're definitely a band of brothers, but at the same time, there's, there's always going to be friction, especially the older people get, but the friction is what makes it cool. It's what keeps the creative juices flowing because some, you know, it's like somebody will bring up an idea um, musically and you may or may not agree, but you're going to try it. And then right, of times, course. yeah, more times than not, you'll learn from that. And, and it, that idea works, you know? Well, and so, Tim, Tim's voice is so important to your band as well. I mean, just he, yeah. you hear his voice instantly and you know that, that, that it's Rise Against immediately. If I didn't hear the notes yet, I'd know it was Rise Against. Well, and that, that was key. Like when this band started, when I was, you know, I tried out 20 singers, but, but I knew Tim from his old band and the, just the Chicago punk scene. And I knew I wanted somebody who could scream with a pitch. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, like that's, yes. that's. You know that's key. That's key for what we do, or at least that—that's the vision I had in my head. And he—he he did it so well. And it definitely comes from that, like Ian Mackay from Fugazi or Minor, you know, Minor Threat, that school, um, where you're not just barking, you know, like like shouting lyrics. There's actually like like a like a melody to the scream, if that there's, makes sense. There's a way to make screaming melodic and and, and musical, you know what I yep, mean? Exactly. Um, rather than make it just an accent, which it just, which is sometimes what that barking feels like to me. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, I, and I'm not knocking it. It's, it's a different style, but yep. it's just there's a way to make it more melodic and musical. And I think you guys do that perfectly. And you group the backing vocals and everything really punch it up. Um, in case you can't tell, you absolutely need to get the new album. I've, I've, I've convinced you enough yet, everybody. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so much fun to listen to. And there's just sometimes with the backing vocals, I, I, I sing stuff myself just for fun and in, in my own bands and stuff. And it's, you'll hear, you just hit certain notes and there's, so I appreciate when I hear vocals, especially like you said, the melodic screaming and there's backing vocals in the whole nine yards and it all just blends together so well that you just, you almost yeah. get chills, you know? And I'm well, sure as, as it's your music, you have to have those chills, you know, working with them. Yeah. And like people, you know, people, I would say other bands in our, in our, our, our peers, I feel like backing vocals getting forgotten about. They're very mm -hmm. important accent, you know, like little things here and there, like lead vocals. But um, that just, that comes from our, our love of pop music, growing up with bands, like especially Bad Religion, who incorporated yeah. yep. three-part harmonies in punk rock. And I mean, even bands like the Beach Boys and the Beatles, I mean. Yeah, the Beatles would have, I mean, come on, the, they 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 turned that into a household thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it, yeah, it's, it, it's funny because growing up, Sometimes I would hear backing vocals before I would listen to the lead vocal. I would mm -hmm. hear those other like auxiliary melodies. So I think that's just the incorp that kind of is the way I play bass too. They're with like chords and things like that. Like um, just the counter melodies of things like always grab me. Right. Uh, now I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, I know you identify as straight edge. Yeah. Yeah. And you've, I, you've been that way for quite some time. What's it been like being in the, like the rock metal and i'm sure you've answered this question before but what's it like being in the rock metal scene um being somebody who's straight edge because i know sometimes there's a lot of pressure to party and this that and the other thing and i think that's an important message no matter how many times it gets told um because there's a lot of people out there who might feel judged for their their choice to 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 be straight edge or to stop drinking or something like that yeah i think it's it's all about respect you know i've never had I experienced peer pressure, of course, in high school, you mm -hmm. know, where, you know, the, my buddies were razzing me for, for not drinking, but then it kind of just stopped. And then people accepted like, Oh, that's Joe. He doesn't drink. It's just not his thing. Yeah. Um, and luckily touring, like every band we've toured with, whether it was metal, ska, you know, punk rock, everyone respects one another's, uh, you know, um, decisions, you know, um, so I, I think I think I feel very fortunate in that sense, you know. And then over over the years, you know, we, we've had friends that grew up partying and they they went the sober route, and and now there's there's definitely more of us backstage who are are sober and they're maybe they're they're drinking coffee. So we're talking about coffee, <laughs> <laughs> which again gets back to one of your passions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can go barista for everybody. Yeah. Um, 
I, I have, this is a very side question, but I have to know. Do you know how to make the little pictures on top of the the foam and everything? You know what? I I've I've I dabble like a leaf is pretty easy, but it it's really interesting how it's it's fairly simple and it's all about how you're you're tipping the cup and how delicate you are pouring the foam on. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's interesting. It's definitely not what I thought it was. Like it's 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 definitely all about the the pour and how delicate you can be um while you're doing your, your little designs <laughs> oh, but, nobody nobody thought we were going to talk about this today but here uh, yeah exactly <laughs> like a leaf and a heart are fairly simple to do <laughs> oh see that's perfect you can set that up beautifully that's that's romantic it's sweet <laughs> you got that um so i i <laughs> a while back um you guys had one of your songs it was um uh, broken dreams broken dreams inc Yep. It was uh, used for the DC Comics Dark Knights uh, death metal soundtrack, right? Yeah. Now, that's probably something your label set up and everything as far as having that done. But are any of you guys like big comic book fans or anything like that? I would say Zach, our guitar player, grew up reading comics. He's definitely submerged in that world. Right. Um, it was kind of a foreign thing to me. I just didn't – I was never exposed to it growing up. I did, But – now that we are exposed to it through broke yeah through uh death metal series um there's so many parallels between the comic world and the punk world you know it's like mm -hmm. it's like a, a a counterculture you know for sure yeah. Yeah. um so i i definitely i i back it I, you know I, I think it's a it's a really cool thing to be into mm -hmm. um definitely fortunate for or fortunate to be a part of that you know tyler bates um who collaborated, you know, with Nine Inch Nails over the years, songwriting and Marilyn Manson. He was kind of the curator of the soundtrack, finding the bands. And he he picked us. Um, he approached us and Sepultura and Ozzy Osbourne, and it just seemed like a cool thing at the time. But I, like it, it was, that world is really cool. So yeah, I feel fortunate to be a part of it. Well, they were fortunate to have the song. It's fast. It's furious. It's awesome. Thanks. Um, if you haven't heard it yet, y you need to. Um, <laughs> so again, June 4th, don't forget nowhere generation is coming out. You need to mark it on your calendars. It's going to be an awesome album. I am looking forward to it greatly. Um, Joe, before I let you go, I like to ask you a, a, a series of random questions at the end here and totally. see what kind of responses I get. So we'll throw these at you a little randomly. Here we go. First one. And yes, there is a wrong answer. Pineapple on pizza. Yes or no? No. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I'm Italian and I grew up in Chicago. No, no pineapple. That's what I tell people. I didn't even grow up there, but I'm like, no, no self-respecting person from Italy or Chicago or anywhere would want this on their pizza. Yeah. They, I, the, uh, there's a great video of these little, these little grandmothers in Italy and they're getting pizza and somebody, they just try to swap out pineapple on it just to see what the reaction is going to be. One of those little old ladies literally hits the guy with the pizza box. So oh, that's great. I thought it was amazing, but I was like, so, all right, great. So I'm glad we can be friends now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, one thing that you would put on your bucket list that you have not achieved yet? Um, I would say cycling across a whole state. It doesn't okay. like, 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 it, like that's a goal of mine, like whether it's Wisconsin or, or Michigan, like I would love to, to have that on, on, on my, uh, or to accomplish that, you know, so yeah. at some point, that's my goal. <laughs> okay. That's, I mean, that's reasonable to me. Um, all right. Now you said you weren't really raised on this, but you kind of got more of an appreciation for it after the death metal uh, soundtrack uh, with DC. Do you have a favorite superhero? Um, well, my kids are, are so submerged in, in that. I really like, um, I would say, I would say Thor. Thor. All right. It's an awesome answer. Yeah. Yeah. An awesome answer. Uh, those movies are fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. What is the strangest thing you've ever eaten? We know you've toured all over the world, so you have to have had tried something weird. Um, well, I'm, I'm vegan, so nothing crazy in the, I would say kelp noodles, kelp, kelp noodles. You know, it's like from the sea and there's a weird, it's a weird wormy texture. Mm -hmm. and it kind of makes me feel like I'm eating worms. But, but yeah, <laughs> um, you know, it's funny is, is uh, I was speaking with um, Sam from a band called the architects in the UK yeah, and he very much like you, he doesn't eat meat and everything. And so he went somewhere and I think he said it was in Japan and the lady was like, Oh, you have to try this. It was a restaurant that did all faux kinds of meat. Right. Yeah. And so they give him something to try and he eats it. And then when he finds out what it is, it's fake snail. 
Oh, that's that would freak me out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So when you said kelp noodles, I'm like, man, you 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 haven't lived, I guess, until you <laughs> try the the fake snail. Um, I'm sure he'd be glad to tell you where he got it from. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, what's the strangest thing a fan has ever done for you or given to you? Um, I would say, I don't have it here. Someone made a little a doll of me. <laughs> like, it's like a little, <laughs> almost like a voodoo doll, but it, that wasn't the in, in, intent. Um, it, right, was a, right. it was a very sweet gesture. A fan in Moscow actually made us dolls, and I still have it here in my office. That's um, cool. Yeah, but it, it was... It was um, it was super awesome. It does look like me, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, uh, I would say the Dow. <laughs> yeah, and just for clarification, in case for some reason they ever see this, I, when I say strange, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean it as unique. So maybe that's what it, I should the most unique thing a fan has ever done for you, giving you. Yeah, exactly. And my, my kids definitely like to throw it around the house and say, like, <laughs> you know, pretend it. Yeah, it's a voodoo doll. But you randomly fall over. <laughs> yeah. Although my my cousin actually made a paper mache version of me that was like four feet tall. Whoa. And and but what I did with that, I would I would scare my wife with it. I would like put it in the closet <laughs> and shut the door. <laughs> and like so so it then it ended up at my mom's house. So right. now I'm through. yeah. That's pretty great though. Uh what was the last movie you watched? Um the last movie I watched was a movie called Land. On uh, it's on iTunes right now. It's about the lady who lost her family and she literally goes out to the middle of nowhere just to, to get away to clear, you know, just to kind of restart her life. And okay. it was a really good movie. Yeah. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm almost using that lad, that question as a cheat so I can get things on my list to watch. Cause I feel like I've gone <laughs> through everything at this point. <laughs> totally. Um, and finally, if you had to pick four bands for your Mount Rushmore of rock, who would it be? Um, four bands. Um, I would say bad brains, uh hardcore band from reno from the 80s seven seconds great okay. band um i would say anthrax because they're one of my favorite bands of all time <laughs> and uh public enemy oh that's a good one i like that last pick that's good yeah it's real they're, good they're great that's awesome i think it's a solid list well joe thanks for talking with me today. i really appreciate it man i i had a great time um thanks. Don't forget, Nowhere Generation, June 4th. You're going to be able to get it, and you should. Uh, it's yeah. going to be out for you, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, Joe Prince Bay, dude, I hope we get to see you sometime soon. Uh, I'd love to be able to catch up with you and just you know, selfishly watch you guys play. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. You have a great day. Stay safe. All right, you too. Bye-bye.